ಈಯಸುಮತಿ ನನ್ನ ಬ್ರಜ ಬರನಾಗರ ಯಸೋಮತಿ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜಬಾರಗ ಗೋಕುಲರಂಜನ ಖಾನ ಗೋಕುಲರಂಜನ ಪರನಂದನ ಮಧಾನ ಮನೋಹರ ಕಾಳಿಯ ದಮ್ಮರ ವಿಧಾನ ಘಾಳಿಯ ದಮ್ಮರ ವಿಧಾನ ಹಾಲ ಹಾರಿ ನಾಮ ಅಮಿಯ ವಿಲಾಸ ಹಾರಿ ನಾಮ ಅಮಿಯ ವಿಲಾಸ ವಿಪೀನ ಪುರಂದರ ನಮ್ಮೆ ನನ್ನ ಗರ್ಭರ ವಿಪೀನ ಪುರಂದರ ನಮ್ಮೆ ನನ ಗರ್ಭರ ಶಿವದಾನ ಸುಭಾಷ ಹೇ ಭಜ ಪಾನ ಸುರಕುಹನಾಸನ ಭಜ ಪಾನ ಸುರಕುಹನಾಸನ ಚಂದ ಗೋರನ್ನ ಹಕ್ಕೋವಾಲ ಚಂದ ಗೋರನ್ನ ಹಕ್ಕೋವಾಲ ಹೇ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾಧವ ನವನಿತ ಖಾಸ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾಧವ ನವನಿತ ಖಾಸ್ಕರ ಸಿಂಧಾರ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಹೇ ಸಿಂಧಾರ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಜಾನುನ ತತ್ಚಾರ ಗೋಪಿ ವಸನೋಹರ ಜಾನುನ ತತ್ಚಾರ ಗೋಪಿ ವಸನೋಹರ ರಸಾರ ಸಿಖ ಕೃಪ ಮೋಯ ರಸಿಕ ಕೃಪ ಮೋಯ ಹೇ ಶ್ರೀರಾದ ಬಾಲ ಬಿಡವಾನ ನತ್ ಭರ ಶ್ರೀರಾದ ಬಾಲ ಬಿಡವಾನ ನತ್ ಭರ ಭಾತಿ ವಿನೋದ ಸ್ವಾಯ 
शिरा बाका दिवीन हो सोमती नंदन गज भर नाग रंग भुख अंजन खाना भाव हरी नाम धमिया विलास गोविंद माधव नवनीत जामुन तत् झर गौपीव सनोहर शिवार भव भव वृंदवान नथ भर हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 हम हरे हम रम रम हरे हरे हम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 सारे सखे दिख सारे हरी हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे सारा हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण घोर हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 हम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण घोर हे थाय घोर हरि भरि 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 भे थाय घोर हरि भरि भरि भर हरि भ यशोमती नंदन ब्रज बर नागर गौकुल रंजन खाना Krishna <laughs> His mother calls him Kana time for food lunch I'm not coming <laughs> I'm playing <laughs> See you tomorrow <laughs> Krishna doesn't like to stop playing he just wants to play he doesn't want to eat it eat sometimes just to please everybody <laughs> okay shrimad bhagavatam canto 6 chapter 2 text numbers 21 and 20 and 21 okay om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
This is titles uh, the Yamaraj instructions to his messengers, verses twenty and twenty-one. Swayambur Narada Sambhu, Kumara Kupila Manu, Pralado Janako Bishmo, Balir Vyasa Kir Vayam. Swayambur Nayada Sambhu Kumara Kapila Manu Pralado Janako Bishmo Palir Vyasa Sakir Vayam Swayambur Narada Sambhu Kumara Kapila Manu, Pralado Janako Bhishmo, Balir Vyasa Sakir Vayam. Ladies, wait. Go ahead. Continue. Okay, ladies, no. Swayambhu, Lord Brahma, Narada, the great saint Narada, Shambhu, Lord Shiva, Kumara, the four Kumaras, Kapila, Lord Kapila, Manu, Swayambhuva Manu, Prahlad, Prahlad Maharaj, Janaka, Janaka Maharaj, Bhishma, Bhishma, Grandfather Bhishma, Grandfather Bhishma. Bali, Bali, Bali Maharaj, Bali Maharaj. Vyasaki, Vyasaki. Sukadev, the son of Vyasadev, Vayam, we, we. Dwadasa, twelve, Ete, Ete. these, these. Viganima, no, no. Dharmam, Real religious principles. Bhagavatam, which teach a person how to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bata, oh my dear servants. Guyam, very confidential. Visudam, transcendental. Not contaminated by the material modes of nature. Durbo Dwam, not easily understood. 
yam, which, gyadva, understanding, amritam, eternal life, asnutiye, he enjoys. So this is Yamaraj, he's speaking to his followers, the Yamadudis, after they have just returned from trying to capture the soul of Ajamya. Mm -hmm. Lord Brahma, Bhagavan Narada, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, Lord Kapila, the son of Devahuti, Swayambhuva Manu, Prahlad Maharaj, Janaka Maharaj, Grandfather Bhishma, Bali Maharaj, Sukadeva Goswami, and I myself know the real religious principles. My dear servants, this transcendental religious principle, which is known as Bhagavad Dharma, or is to surrender unto the Supreme Lord and love for Him, is content is uncontaminated by the material modes of nature. It is very confidential and difficult for ordinary human beings to understand. But if by chance one fortunately understands it, he is immediately liberated and thus he returns home back to Godhead. Purport. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna refers to Bhagavad Dharma as the most confidential religious principle. Sarva Guya Tamam Guya Guya Taram. Krishna says to Arjuna, Because you are my very dear friend, I am explaining to you the most confidential religion. Sarva Dharma Pradiksha Jam Mami Kam Sharanam Bhaja. Give up all other duties and surrender unto me. One may ask, if this principle is very rarely understood, what is the use of it? The question is asked. In answer, Yamaraj states herein that this religious principle is understandable if one follows the parampara system of Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, and the other standard authorities. There are four lines of disciplic succession, one from Lord Brahma, one from Lord Shiva, one from Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, and one from the Kumaras. The disciplic succession from Lord Brahma is called Brahma Sampradaya. The succession, succession from Lord Shiva, Shambhu, is called the Rudra Sampradaya. The one from the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, is called Sri Sampradaya. In order to understand the most confidential religious system. In the Purana it is said, Sampradaya vihina ye mantrate nishpalam mata. If one does not follow the four recognized as many ah sampradayas or sampradayas which are not bona fide, which have no link to authorities like Lord Brahma, people are misguided by such sampradayas. The Shastras say that being initiated in such a sampradaya is useless waste of time for will never enable one to understand the real religious principles. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasa Vigor Bhakti Gvinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Bebhacha Pitana Om Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha this is this verse here is very fundamental. In fact, it's one of the more important verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Two verses in one which describe that Mahajano uh, Yena Katasapanta. Then one must follow in the footsteps of the authorized authorities who can teach uh, what we say eternal religious principles. So here we're under getting a little insight of who those personalities are. And it's quite streamlined. It's not such a wide range. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, and Sri Lakshmi Devi. 
These are the four, what they call, authorized sampradayas. In other words, these sampradayas were not created by some personality. They were created by the Lord Himself. And they've been given a uh, sampradaya head. So we have Lord Brahma as the head of our sampradaya. In the south of India, mostly in the Rudra sampradaya, Lord Shiva. And south also in there we have Lakshmi Devi who is the head of the Sri Sampradaya. Or sometimes we say, uh, yeah, Sri Sampradaya. To create a new religion or a new way to do something. Taking something from one place and taking something from another place and another place and putting it all together and calling it, you know, the, the latest way to practice religion. But there's nothing new under the sun. Everything has already been given by the Supreme Lord. But today we find that uh, there's more us up and dias, or when we say unauthorizes, unauthorized personalities who teach or claim to be proponents of religious teachings, <clears throat> and it's very prominent, especially in India. Many of them have migrated to the West <laughs> because they know the Westerners are easy prey for such, because uh, they don't know anything about Eastern religion, so any so-called yogi or sadhu or comes and he, uh, he uh, speaks very interestingly, <laughs> juggles a few words, has a little bit of mystic power, can produce some ashes without even trying hard, <laughs> or some gold. In other words, most of them are magicians at best, and others are just, uh, just speculators, but they can speak nicely, <laughs> and they have the power of speech. That is, that is actually a mystic power, to be able to speak in such a way as to control the minds of others. So there's many of those such persons. They they practice this this mystic power of how to control the minds of others simply by their power of speech. And the history of India, especially, you find many such persons. There was one such person who came from this place, Pune, he, very powerful, in the sense that he went all over the world and started his bogus sampradaya. <laughs> we all know who we're talking about. We won't mention any names. <laughs> and his uh, so-called teachings are still going on, although he's no longer on the planet. But it's because people in nowadays, very few people really want the truth. Most people want that there you get some material war, rewards by practicing spiritual life. And this is quite common. People also pray for that. And the leaders who are so-called yogis, who take the position of being powerful preachers, they, 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 they attract their persons. That you can, yeah, you can be very spiritually inclined, you can know uh, who you are, you can actually know your God. You don't know your God now, but that's okay, we'll give you, give us, give us a little time and you become God, because then you can start your own religion. And um, because you are God, you'll also get many followers. <laughs> so they, they have so many, and there's one now in, I don't know, I don't want to mention his name. Two of our devotees who are really big industrialists in India who follow Krishna consciousness very, I mean, these people are millionaires. They came to see his, listen to his lecture. And uh, they, uh, somehow there was a chance for asking questions, so they asked. They started to say that actually it's mentioned in the scriptures that Krishna and Ram are both the Supreme Personality of God who comes at different times. So they said this to this bogey yogi. And he immediately rejected that. He said, this Krishna and Ram is going on. So you'll see 
Uh, a lot of this goes on. We all know that, you know, he appeared about 5,100 years ago in a place called Sri Vrindavanda. And that that is very common and it's easy to the persons who are following. So um, there's no question that the Supreme Personality of God had appeared. But a lot of these bogey yogis, they want to reject God or say that, you know, actually you can become God or actually you are God, even when Krishna was here, he had to deal with a lot of that. There was that one yogi called Pondraka. <clears throat> he was a, he claimed to be a Kshatriya. Krishna was also in the mood of a Kshatriya. When Krishna left Vrindavan, he came to uh, he came to Mathura, and his business was to free all the inhabitants of Mathura and others from the uh, control of this b big powerful demon called Kamsa. And Krishna arranged to kill him very nicely in a wrestling match. And he reestablished that his, uh, his father-in-law, Ugrasena, on the throne. And um, then Krishna went around to finish all the other demons off, <laughs> one after another. Pravitranayam sarunam vinaisanaya chaduskritam dharma samstartanataya sambhavama yuge yuge. So the part of Krishna's mission is to eliminate the demons. So there was one so-called personality, he claimed that he was actually Lord Vasudev. And he took the symbols of the Lord, the conch, the club, the disc, and the lotus flower, and he would carry them around. And then he would wear the helmet and he would, you know, he would try to look just like Lord Vishnu. <laughs> And he even challenged Krishna. When he saw Krishna, he said, you know, you give up these symbols. These are actually my symbols because I am the real uh, Vishnu and you're simply an imposter. And Krishna just laughed when he saw him. He was thought, these guys were quite funny, you know. <laughs> and he was challenging Krishna in so many ways, calling Krishna names and saying that Krishna was just an, a fake but the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, a uh, goddess of obviously goddess of goddess of knowledge, Saraswati, was actually reinterpreting what he was saying as a one uh, was actually praising the Lord rather than criticizing the Lord. Because in the material world, if you praise the Lord, if you or if you criticize the Lord, in one sense it's the same because it's directed towards the Lord. But devotees, of course, always praise the Lord. But, the, but others find fault with the Lord, but because they remember the Lord, they get the benefit of uh, some Sukriti, simply by remembering the Lord. So then Krishna just, you know, tolerated him for a little while and just threw his Sudarshan chakra and gave him a haircut below the neck, you know. So he gave him a complete haircut, that was his last haircut, <laughs> and removed his head. And uh, yeah, he was finished. <laughs> so this was one of many such personalities. And of course, he claimed to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So now it's even more fashionable. Uh, I remember when I was in uh, New Vrindavan, uh, I began my Krishna consciousness in the New Vrindavan community in West Virginia in America. And uh, we were there one day, and there's all of these young persons came into our community with flyers and said that uh, Kalki Avatar has appeared in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Which wasn't so far from where we were. And he's holding darshans in the evening. So we have come to invite all of you, since you are worshippers of Krishna, you should meet Kalki, he's here. So we were thinking, he's a little early. <laughs> he's not due for another couple hundred thousand years. <laughs> well, maybe he's a little, maybe Kali Yuga is so bad he's decided to come a little sooner. <laughs> so, of course, we never went to any of these things, but this is what was going on. So, and then, of course, also in other religious sectors, there's also bogus in invitations claiming to be either God or Lord Jesus Christ or some prophet or some so-called sadhu. 
So there was one person, he came into our, our community and he said he was actually Lord Christ. And uh, we tolerated him for a while, then we threw him out of the community. We, we thought, since he's Christ, he should go out and preach. <laughs> so I remember after we removed him from the community, he was walking down the road leaving our community and I just happened to be driving my vehicle down the road, which was a Ford van. And then he was hitchhiking. So, so Christ was hitchhiking. Pretty good. <laughs> so um, I thought, all right, let me give Christ a ride. <laughs> so I said, you, where are you going? <laughs> are you going to Bethlehem? No, I guess, I don't know where he was going, <laughs> but anyway. He was walking. And then, uh, so I said, well, you're saying you're Lord Jesus Christ, but it's, it's understood that anyone who claims to be Christ has to show the stigmata. So you know what the stigmata, it's the marks of crucifixion which are on the hands of Christ. So I said, let me see the stigmata. So he went like this. <laughs> that fast. I said, I didn't see anything. He said, I only show it once. <laughs> so I thought, I think he should walk. <laughs> so I pretty much asked him to get out of the van and walk, which he agreed to do. <laughs> so you know, you find such persons in all of the traditions, but India is famous for that. He's so much bogus sampradaya. So you have to be careful because even though there's others who claim to be very much in line with our tradition, but take things and change things around. But here, if you follow this principle here, there are only four sampradayas or lineages coming from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna himself, or Ram, or Narayan, those Sampradayas have come from the Lord themselves, therefore they are authorized. As it mentions here, one who follows the Sampradaya can actually reach perfection in the execution of one's devotional service. And so here, that end of the Bhagavad Gita, after discussing all of the various ways one can practice religious life, karma yoga, jnana yoga, and he also goes deep into bhakti yoga. And he also talks about who he is, what is our relationship with him, what is our, who we are, what is this material energy, how the material energy works, and what is the reactions of activities. After summarizing everything, he says, now I've given you everything, now you surrender. <laughs> so what, is it, what does he mean by give up all other ways He's saying that you may have your own ideas on how you can make advancement in spiritual life, but forget about it because they're not going to work. If you surrender to me, he says, Ma suchaha. He says, I will give you protection. I will give you freedom from all anxiety. I will give you ultimately engagement in my service. So Krishna assures that if we simply follow that simple principle, but what is that principle? Krishna mentions that principle in the previous verse, manmana bhava mad bhakto, mam yaji mam namas guru, mam yavaisasi satyam te, pratijano priyo si me. He says, the first two lines, he sums up everything. Always think of me. So Prabhupada used to say, you have to think of something. The mind cannot be vacant. Even when we go to sleep, sometimes we find ourselves in dream. But even if we don't dream or don't remember dreams, we go into deep sleep. And in deep sleep, the mind is still working, although we're not conscious of it. So the mind is constantly working. So therefore, on the waking level, we have, we're always thinking about what we have to do or about something we're thinking about. So why not think of Krishna? <laughs> Prabhupada used to say, just put Krishna in your mind, that's all. 
you might think, how am I going to get anything done? Right? If I'm thinking of Krishna, nothing's going to get done. No, actually everything will get done. And it'll get done better. <laughs> because simply by remembering Krishna and going about your daily activities, aside from your regular, you know, religious sadhana principles, you can do, you can find happiness by remembering Krishna all the time. You're connected with Krishna simply by the process of remembering him. And you can live life in the material world. That's why in, in Bengal they have a saying, Hate Koro Kaje Muki Bolo Hori. <laughs> Hate Koro Kaje Muki Bolo Hori. So that means uh, work with your hands, but chant the na names of Hari. <laughs> So it's a good, good little lesson to understand that we should try to remember Krishna always. And when you remember Krishna, you're with Krishna. It's not that we remember Krishna when we're at the temple or when we're doing some uh, practice. The process is to remember Krishna as much as possible. So you might, so Prabhupada would also say, but you can't remember someone if you don't have some attraction for them. <laughs> So then Krishna says, always remember me, become my devotee. So in other words, he says, do some service. In other words, serve me. By serving him, you remember Krishna. And by the more you remember Krishna, the more, it, the more you serve Krishna, the more you can remember Krishna. And then those first two things are easily done. And then he says, worship me. Come to the temple, worship the deities, establish worship at your own home. Worship the Lord in various ways. And he also says, offer your homage to me. This is the fourth of the four principles. Homage means offer your obeisances. So we fall flat, or this is called dandavats, <laughs> or sometimes we just call it obeisances. That means I am your servant. I am ready to carry out your instructions. Not that, well, here I am, Lord, and this is what I need. Take out your pencil and paper and write it down. Don't forget it. Make sure you do it because I'm your devotee. <laughs> and I told this story yesterday how when I was in London, the devotees told me this little story where one lady, she was from the Indian culture, she came to our temple in Bhaktivedanta Manor in London. So she had a son who was going to university or high school, I'm not sure. So she came in front of the Lord and she was very emotional. She said, my dear Lord, you know, my son, he's going to university. I really want him to get the best marks. So please, 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 I'm praying, give him four or give him 10 A's in his 10 subjects. <laughs> he had 10 subjects, so she asked for 10 A's, you know the best of all marks. So after some time, the boy finished the school and he got nine A's. <laughs> she went back to the Lord and said, Lord, don't you remember I asked for 10? <laughs> you only gave nine. <laughs> Did you forget? <laughs> So she was, not, she was actually a little disturbed, quite disturbed, because he didn't get ten A's. <laughs> so this, this goes on in the name of so-called worship, that people ask for material benedictions. But Prabhupada said, if you want material benedictions, then uh, you, can, you can worship the demigods. <laughs> but worshiping the demigods, the material benedictions you get are given by Krishna anyway. So if you need something material, and you worship the Lord, the Lord will think, oh, this devotee is worshiping so nicely, not asking for anything. Oh, they need something? All right, I'll give it. Because <laughs> Krishna knows. Many times the devotees, devotees don't even ask for anything material. And still Krishna wants to somehow or other reciprocate his devotee. So he knows what the devotee wants, but the devotee's not asking because they don't want to ask the Lord for anything material. But the Lord knows, and so He gives it. He arranges it, and just to just to just to please His devotee. But His real, when we say mercy, or His, the mercy that He really gives, is He gives you attachment to Himself. 
or he gives you a chance to associate with devotees and engage in devotional service. That's his real mercy. And then he, then he becomes available through that. So, therefore, when Krishna says Sarva Dharma Pariksha Jam, he's doing, he's saying it for, not, not for his benefit, he's not trying to collect devotees, he's doing it simply for our own benefit. But then, after doing that, and after many years after, Krishna was thinking, hmm, I made it too hard. Nobody wants to surrender. So, I have to come again and make it easier. So then he came as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Tabi Avatar Sado Sido Mani Kevalaya Nanda Kanda. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so merciful that he doesn't ask you for anything. He says, Chen Hare Krishna. <laughs> and when you feel happy, dance. And then if when you feel hungry, take some nice spiritual foodstuffs that are offered to me in devotion. And in that way, find happiness in singing, dancing, and eating. That's Mahaprabhu's program. And if you're a little inclined, read books. <laughs> but Prabhupada said you can become fully self-realized simply by chanting, dancing, and feasting. One time Srila Prabhupada was giving a talk and he was saying, this Krishna consciousness is simply chanting, dancing, and feasting. That's all. So the devotees were saying, but Prabhupada, we got so many other things to do. Not just chanting, dancing, and feasting, that's all. But Prabhupada, we got this uh, chanting, dancing, and feasting, that's all. <laughs> so what he's, well, he was saying, that everything that we do is chanting, dancing, and feasting. <laughs> Even if we do other things, it's just, it fits into one of these three categories. <laughs> and Kevala Ananda Kanda. It is joyfully performed. So that's Mahaprabhu. He's very kind. But he's asking, asking one other thing. Don't find fault with anyone. He says, if you want the mercy of Mahaprabhu, chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, become attached to chanting, and don't find fault with anyone. He said, if you do these two things, you get my full mercy. Adoshana Darshi, Adoshana Darshi means not seeing the faults of others. Although someone else may have faults, it's not important. Forget about it, just pass it over. Just, and when Mahaprabhu says, if you follow these two principles, chanting in the holy names of the Lord and not finding fault with others, you'll receive my full mercy. And what is that full mercy? That the Lord actually uplifts us. When we chant, we actually feel ecstasy in that chanting. <laughs> That's his mercy. <laughs> okay, and so we have a, a clear understanding from this uh, particular purport here that outside of these four sampradayas, there is no authorized way that one can... And Prabhupada makes the point. He says, your initiation, if you have done it outside, your mantra, whatever you've been given, if it's not within these four sampradayas, it's... Shrama Avali Kevalam, it's useless. It has no because this is the Lord has made the process there. He said, therefore he said, Mahajano Yena Katasapanta Tarko Pratishte Shutinam Bibinam. What's the next line? Natava Nihitaya Guhaya Mahajano Yena Katasapanta. That last line is the culmination of that statement. He says that there are many forms, this person speculates, this person speculates, there's so many speculations. A, sa, a great soul is not considered to be a great soul unless they differ from other great souls. <laughs> and then it goes on and establishes that as, as a reality within the, in existence, but then it says, but Mahajano Yena Katastapata. So this verse here describes the um, 12 Mahajanos, Mahajans. Brahma, Narada, Shiva, the Kumaras, Kapila, Swayambhuva Manu, Prahlad, Maharaj, Janaka Maharaj, Grandfather Bhishma, Bali, 
Maharaj Sukadev Goswami and Yamaraj. These are the 12 Maharaja. So they teach eternal religious principles within those four sampradayas. <laughs> so we can hear from them. Of course, the Bhagavatam is mostly about coming from Sukadev Goswami to Maharaj Pariksit. So that is the essence of the knowledge that we are receiving. We're receiving it from Sukadev Goswami, who is a in, he, intimate associated of Srimati Radharani, appearing again to do this work of giving this knowledge to the world in Srimad Bhagavatam. So if you read Srimad Bhagavatam and study Srimad Bhagavatam, everything is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. You don't need to go anywhere else. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says one thing. I have to qualify what I just said because I'm not, I didn't give the complete picture yet. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya, Chari Namri, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and Srimad Bhagavata, that's all you need, three books. <laughs> that's all. And then, uh, and then he said, but, Two books are enough, Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. But even if Srimad Bhagavatam is lost, if you have Chaitanya Charitamrita, you have everything. <laughs> so he gets right to the essence. Because Chaitanya, Charitam, Chaitanya Charitamrita is living Bhagavatam. It's Bhagavatam, the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the light, Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is Bhagavan. <laughs> so, these two scriptures, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, and Prabhupada actually expanded it. He said four books. He said Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, um, Bhagavad Gita, and Nectar of Devotion. Because Nectar of Devotion is the handbook by which you, one learns the science on how to execute the activities of devotional service. And as Chaitanya Charitamrita is an incarnation of Lord Chaitanya, Srimad Bhagavatam is an incarnation of Lord Krishna. Uh, Nectar Devotion is an incarnation of Srimati Radharani. Because <laughs> she's Bhakti Devi. She is the internal energy of the Lord and she is pure devotional service manifested in literary form known as Chaitanya uh, um, Nectar Devotion coming from uh, Srila Rupa Goswami, who is an intimate associate of Srimati Radharani. So everything is there. The process is simple. We don't have to run this way and that way to learn, to learn something new. What's on, the, what's on the internet? What is this yogi saying? What is this, this sadhu saying, this saying, this saying? Everything is there. And just like when you're married, uh, one of the, the highest quality that one can develop in marriage life is chastity. To chase, stay faithful to your wife, to stay faithful to your husband, and not to go outside for anything. So in the same way, stay chaste to the parampara, which is coming by Srila uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu coming from Lord Brahma himself. We are Brahma Gaudiya Madhva Sampradaya. Madhvachari is also there. So if we stay if we stay within that Sampradaya and hear all the knowledge we need and more, you can't even exhaust it. You can study these books and for thousands of lifetimes and you still never will never come to the end of this knowledge. It's unlimited. And so everything is there, and especially Srimad Bhagavatam. Every day, Nasta Prayeshu Abhidreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhagavati Naistiki. If we hear Srimad Bhagavatam every day and engage in service, we will we'll make progress to go back home, back to Godhead, which is the goal of life, not to stay in this material world and traverse maya dabhase, kacho bese, kacho habu bubu dai. Not to life after life, to come back and simply try to make a nice arrangement in this material world, which is not possible. 
because everything in this world is temporary and it's fraught with so many problems, <laughs> especially in Kali Yuga. Prabhupada would say to his devotee, Kali Yuga is here. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has merciful appeared in this Kali Yuga. Take advantage of his mercy. Chant Hare Krishna, go back home, back to Godhead. Don't come back because Kali Yuga is going to get worse. <laughs> it's going to get worse. He would warn his, his devotees, don't try to come. You can finish up in one life if you follow the principles given by Mahaprabhu, which is Srimad Bhagavatam. And of course, Bhagavad Gita. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Is there anyone who would like to ask a question? Yes. Mm -hmm. We have a microphone there. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for your wonderful lecture. And my question is around the Sampradaya. You explained very well. Uh, why these upper Sampradayas or uh, uh, groups of uh, re so-called religious leaders, they're flourishing. They have a lot of followership, a lot of money and yeah. wealth they are getting. Uh, not as much as we as an authentic uh, society we we could use that resources those people uh, and uh, yeah. to spread krishna consciousness but why are they flourishing uh, one of uh, uh, thing that i understand uh, just like uh, lord vishnu asked Sh uh, lord shiva that you go and spread the mayavad to separate these uh, non believers in my personal form to separate them from the devotees you spread the Mayavad. So can we look at these other Sampradayas? They are not even Mayavadis. They are totally different and not even uh, following Shankaracharya. So can we look at these Sampradayas also uh, a, a way Krishna wants to separate uh, the people uh, from the devotees and authentic Sampradaya? It's an interesting point you made. That is not a main point, but that is a point. And the point is, yeah, for those who don't want the real stuff, Krishna arranged for the cheaters to come. <laughs> Those who don't want to surrender to the Lord or even engage in worshiping the Lord, then they want something else. So Krishna allows for these, these cheaters to flourish. And people come. They say, then, you know, you don't have to do much. All you have to do is chant some mantras, give some money, stand on your head and twist your ear. And you and you can be uh, God soon. So he may, you know, this is Kali Yuga. And one of the reasons why they flourish is because it's the age of Kali. Where uh, you and you, these, these Asampradayas would never flourish in, pre in previous ages. Not to the extent they flourish now. And, and if they, as soon as they appeared in previous ages, they would be easily recognized and removed. But in this age, now people want something cheap. They don't want to. They don't want to surrender to the Lord. He wants something easy. And they want to go on with their material life and call themselves spiritual at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but you made that as a nice point. Yeah, for those who don't want the real thing, who can't surrender to the real thing, but want something, these cheaters are there <laughs> to give them an opportunity. <laughs> But if you really want Krishna, Krishna will lead you to the right place. If you want something else, you'll go there mm -hmm. based on your desire. <laughs> Prabhupada talks about his own life. Mm -hmm. How he was, when he was a young boy, his father he would welcome so many of these sadhus. And when Prabhupada was, you know, a young man, I just graduated from college, newly married. He was walking along with his friend Narendra Nath Mulek. And Narendra Nath Mulek said, there's a very saintly person, he's giving a lecture tonight. He does it every night. Let us go to see him. He speaks so nicely about Krishna. And our Srila Prabhupada said, no, no I don't want to go. I know about all these bogey yogis. <laughs> but his, his course, his friend knew that this was not a bogey yogi, a genuine one. And Prabhupada eventually went and he met his spiritual master. But Prabhupada had that experience also growing up. 
And he never had trusted any of these, uh, you know, so-called sadhus. They smoke, you know, hashish, other things. Some of them have power. They have power. But they don't, they don't really teach about God. Or if they do mention God, they say, you become God and, or else I am God, either one. <laughs> Yeah, so this is Kali Yuga. <laughs> a lot of them, cheaters are flourishing. And they'll continue like that because people want that. <laughs> yeah, nice point. Yeah, <laughs> good point. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone else? Yes. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. <clears throat> We see that even in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just due to the course of Kali Yuga, there were deviations in Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Bhakti Siddhanta they had revived it and Srila Prabhupada carried it around the world. So I'm just curious to know if you can give advice to a future generation in order to protect the legacy of that Sampradaya which was revived by these Acharyas. Stay in the association of uh, advanced devotees. <clears throat> then you're protected. In other words, you should, if you stay in association with those who are following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then you're protected. You don't have to go outside or be influenced by what's going on. Because everything is here. Our movement is joyful. Chant, dance, nice, per, nice food. Can't beat it. Every day is a festival. Every day is a holiday. You know, just like some religions, they celebrate once a week. <laughs> the rest of the week they go to work. We celebrate every day. <laughs> Not every day, every minute. <laughs> Chanting, dancing, you know, meeting nice people, and sharing spiritual knowledge. Stay in the association of devotees, that's all. As soon as you go outside of the association of devotees, you're putting yourself in a position to be influenced by something else, by something different. Find that association and then actually take part. Mm -hmm. But as we mentioned, there's so many other things going on and people get a little bit curious to see what else is happening. But that curiosity and there's an old saying in America, curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> Cats are curious and sometimes their curiosity leads to them to their own demise. <laughs> so there's nothing out there that we have to explore and see what's going on. I can tell you a story. It's not exactly about philosophy, but it's about how curiosity can destroy a person's spiritual life. And there was one brahmachari, he was doing book distribution in the Balkans, which is in, you know, in you know, this Croatia, Slovenia, and Herzegovina, then Bosnia, Serbia. So he was doing, but he was doing book distribution by himself. He wasn't with anyone. And he was going from place to place. He was quite good at it. And then he was alone in his apartment one day and he was on his computer. And all of a sudden he happened to hit the wrong computer button. <laughs> and something came up which he shouldn't have saw. <laughs> he came into other areas where there was, you know, this uh, uh, pornography. He came up on the screen. And so when, he, when that came up, his mind somehow looked at it. And then he, for, when we say a, a time period, he was looking at it and his whole mind became so disturbed. Later on he came to talk to me because I knew him. And it was such a disturbance in his Krishna consciousness, he couldn't get that out of his mind. And I just told him the reason why is because you were without association. <laughs> because he was, if he was with association, it would have been 
person could have brought him back and helped him right there. We saw the example in the scriptures, Bart Maharaj. Bart Maharaj got a ch charmed by a baby deer. He was all alone in the forest. He had no one else that was around to tell him, hey Bart, you're in Maya. <laughs> You know, you've given up your spiritual practice just to take care of an animal. But because he was all alone, he didn't get any advice <laughs> or help. So Sadhu Sangha, Association of Devotees, is, is very fundamental for all of our advancement in spiritual life. And the happiness we're looking for also in the process of in executing devotional life. It's all in devotional, in association with devotees. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada said something. He said, there are three things that are important in Krishna consciousness. Association, association, association. <laughs> Can you remember those three? Okay. <laughs> well, he made it, wanted to make a point how, how valuable and important association is for our spiritual growth. <laughs> and the happiness that comes by way of that association. Yeah, so that's, that's the answer to your question. Always stay in association of devotees. Even if you become advanced and you're out there preaching and sometimes you're alone, always be eager to get back to the association of devotees. So important. Yes, Mataji, you have a question? Okay. We're going to give you the microphone so you can become heard by many. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Danwar uh, Pranam Guru Maharaj Ji, my question is, uh, you said that it is possible for us to go back to home, back to God in one life, which is uh, critical for understanding. So could you please at least tell us how to intensify that desire or what we should do? Because, and the second question goes like, uh, you said that Chaitanya Ma, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can protect our bhakti, but when one is alone and the association is very difficult, so at that time how the pro, uh, bhakti will be protected? So two questions. Thank you so much. Done with how to deepen our bhakti so we can accelerate our our advancement in Krishna consciousness? Shushusha Sharadanasya Vasudeva Kataruji Shaniyad Seva Vipa Purnyatirtana Sevana by rendering service to great souls, great service is done. <clears throat> and by such service, one gets an affinity to hear the message of Vasudev. <clears throat> so by seeking out great devotees and looking for opportunities to serve them, hearing from them, serving with them, taking an advantage of their association, <clears throat> you get an attraction for hearing and enchanting the glories of the Lord. The next verse, Srinvata Swakata Krishna Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha. It's Ridanto Sto Abhadrani Vidhunoti Srihit Satam. So, by that mercy of the, the association and service to great souls, you develop this desire to hear and chant the, the, the glories of the Lord. And when that desire becomes strong, <clears throat> and Krishna in the heart starts to clear away all of your material attachments. And then you make fast progress. So because, but the essence of the process is to hear and share the glories of the Lord. And the great souls will open up that mercy through your service to them, through your association with them. That mercy becomes... We get attracted to Krishna, we get attracted to hearing about Krishna. And then that attraction becomes stronger. Everyone, each one of us has some attraction for Krishna, but we can always increase that attraction. 
because Krishna's attraction is as unlimited as he is. He is unlimited, and the attract and the way you can get attracted to him is also unlimited. <laughs> There's no limit, and when you reach a certain stage of attraction, then you are constantly joyful. What is that verse? Uh, the Shoshuti na Kangshuti. What's the first line? Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasoshuti na Kangshuti. Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Madbhakti Labhate Pranam. Yeah. So then one becomes happy and joyful all the time, not just some of the time. And then, then one doesn't lament, one doesn't hanker for anything. And one gradually starts to uh, take shelter of the process of pure devotional service. Mm -hmm. In other words, one reaches the transcendental platform. Mm -hmm. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and serving the great souls. These are the essence of the process. <laughs> And even if you're alone, if you're doing these things, you're protected. <laughs> because you're never alone. Krishna's always there in your heart. <laughs> it's not possible to be alone. Even if you want to be alone, you can't be. Krishna's still there. <laughs> He never leaves you. Never. <laughs> okay, anything else? So, yeah, okay, we've reached the end. So, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.